Who can tell me what subjective means? If you see a flower and you say it's pretty, that might mean subjective. So that's an example of subjective. Our friend Ariana, she's wearing a headband. Is that true? Do we all agree on that? Yes. yes. So that's subjective. If I say it's a vibrant headband that I think is very nice, is that objective or subjective? Subjective. The learning objective was for students to be able to evaluate and compare different works of art through different lenses. So looking at the art as an artist and using artistic words and looking and analyzing through a scientific lens and using technical or scientific words. We talk about how there are different ways to know the world. There's the subjective, my experience way of knowing the world, but then there's also the objective or the scientific way of knowing the world. In science, we try to know things with our eyes, understanding the natural world, maybe not the emotional world. But in art, it's more philosophical and it's more personal, right? We can know the world through art and we can know the world through science. Both of these things humans do to understand the world. They're just different ways of knowing and we use different types of words. They've already had instruction on the elements of art. They are very fluent in many of the different words we use to describe art. And they also have a lot of background knowledge in science. We've done different informative readings on biodiversity, elements of an ecosystem. So I just reviewed the scientific words just to have them primed for them. And then we started by looking at, as a whole group, one work of art that portrays nature. The style of art is artistic, but it's influenced by scientific drawings. So what do you see here, Juan? I see a pear. I think it's a caterpillar on top of it. Jessica? I agree with Juan that the fruit might be a pear because pears do have that kind of shape. I also think the insects might be eating it I could see like a small dent or bite mark on the pair. We had a group conversation. This gives them an opportunity to hear each other, to have me listen and paraphrase and ask them certain guiding questions that should get them thinking about the paintings and the pictures in a particular way. So I heard you, Jezebeth, mention insects. What do we know scientifically about insects? All insects have six legs. We can tell by their legs and their antennas. Okay, so there's some attributes that we can use to classify what we call insects. So after the group discussion, the students go and work in small groups. I've given them posters and different prints, but they're all depictions of nature. I'm going to give your group 10 minutes see as many things as you can with your artist eyes and see as many things as you can with your scientist eyes using those words, okay? Everyone get in your group. The groups discuss amongst themselves what is artistic, what is scientific, and they're evaluating. So you can hear them asking, okay, is that artistic? Is that scientific? What's artistic or scientific? Something scientific is that in reality there are plants like the Venus flytrap. It's gonna eat this mosquito because it's opening its mouth. It looks like it's holding the mouth. It's oh, like eating it's it. Strong. Working in my group helped me because I can see kids in my class and notice that you can see them in a different way. The art center artistic is like the face looks so squished up. So using you know that T chart, they're going to make sure that they're seeing through different lenses. And they can monitor and see, oh, I've got a lot of artistic and I need scientific now. No, it was it artistic? Or was yeah. it scientific? Oh yeah, it was scientific. <laughs> 
Because what do you guys think? Do you think this mosquito or, or that dragonfly? Yeah, yeah dragonfly, dragonfly is standing there. Oh, well, because it looks like it's hanging. Like it's like hanging upside little, down. Oh, no. Looks like a bat. So is that like scientific? No, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because it can be scientific. So you okay, think Anna. because Anna. it has the the patterns of the wings. That's that's what I said already. I also give them all different color markers. That's a strategy to ensure that all students are participating because they're accountable for their color showing up on the poster. So now we're going to share with the class. I want you to be sure to project your voices, look at your audience, talk to the people sitting and watching you. So everyone share one scientific thing and one artistic thing. I think that something scientific is that the pink plant looks like it's going to eat the mosquito like a Venus flytrap. Josue, you said it looks like it's going to eat the insect. Does everyone agree that's scientific? No. Can someone say why they either agree or disagree with that? Amina? I disagree that it looks like the flower is going to eat the moth because um, maybe the flower is just made like that and the moth is just lying right there. Using visual art is a scaffold for students that maybe aren't able to obtain all of the literary information from the text, but when we're having these class discussions, they are talking and engaging with their peers. It gives many more students access to the discourse that's happening in the class. After they were done presenting and sharing, we engaged in a quick discussion about which one of the works of art was most scientific. And so now, which one of these do you think is most scientific? I think that one's the most scientific. There's a butterfly and a whole bunch of flowers, and you usually see butterflies with flowers. The students are getting a lot more science and scientific thinking through studying art. It frees them to think about things from different perspectives and it allows them to understand that there's no right or wrong answer necessarily, but there's better justified answers. There's more evidence for particular answers and that's really the same in art and science. We have different opinions. Now think about it from the other perspective. And so you're going to write a paragraph. Which one of these is the most artistic. So I want you to turn and talk to your partner and talk about which one of these you think is most artistic. The most artistic is the flowers because it actually shows a lot of color and a lot of saturation. The common core standards of being able to make observations, debate, articulate your opinions and provide evidence, those are everywhere in art and science. but. If you can give students more opportunities to talk and discuss, no matter what it's about, they're going to become better writers and better readers. Then the final piece, when they were writing their paragraph, the structure is there, the arguments are there. They're able to construct substantiated arguments. You should all have a piece of paper. Thank you, Mariana. You're going to evaluate, and then using your artistic and scientific words, you're going to make an argument. Which one of these? you pick is the most artistic to you. And you may begin. You can come up with whatever title you would like. What was hard for me was explaining why I thought the still life with dead birds in it was more artistic than the rest of them. I worked through it by looking at all the details it had. I think that the painting that looks the most artistic is the first one. It has all of the animals looking dead and the dead birds make it look like a cartoon. Any questions or comments for this one? Something scientific that I noticed was that like it shows the patterns and like the texture of the wings when you look up closer to it. I definitely see that art, it's enriching their capacity to understand and grow as scientists. You know, when we're looking at depictions of wildlife and nature, we're talking about life science or the landscapes, we're talking about earth science. The more depictions of nature that they can see, the deeper understanding the students will be able to obtain.